Gravity accelerates everything toward the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. That means that if you fall for one second, you will be traveling at a speed of 9.8 meters per second, or 21.92 miles per hour. If you fell for 10 seconds, you would reach a speed of almost 220 miles per hour. Shock is a sudden change in speed. Shock is what you would experience if you hit the ground after falling for 10 seconds. We can measure shock in g-forces. A change in speed of 9.8 meters per second is equal to 1 g of shock. Double that is 2 g's and so on. If you were traveling at 9.8 meters per second, or 21.92 miles per hour, and you slowed to a stop over a period of one second, you would experience one G of shock. When you bump your head on something hard, like wood, even if you're barely moving, it's an unpleasant experience. Bump your head on something padded and you barely notice. This is because of the difference in time it takes for your head to decelerate when hitting something hard versus hitting something soft. It may seem like a tiny difference, slowing down over the distance of a few centimeters versus a millimeter. But if we look at the math, the difference is astonishing. Let's pretend you fell on a padded carpet floor and your head was traveling at just two miles per hour. For simplicity, let's say your head goes from two miles per hour to a dead stop in one-tenth of one second in two centimeters. That's a deceleration rate of around 20 miles per hour per second or slightly less than one G, barely noticeable. Let's look at the same fall on a wooden floor. Wood offers very little shock absorption. Another way of saying this is that wood decelerates your head in a very short period of time over a very small distance. For simplicity, let's say the wood flexes one millimeter. Instead of a tenth of a second of deceleration, you now have five one hundredths of a second to decelerate. That's a deceleration rate of 400 miles per hour per second, almost 20 Gs of force at the point of impact. In trampoline parks, it's not unusual to reach heights of 10 feet or more. The long journey back down to Earth from that height puts you at a speed of 17.29 miles per hour. Landing normally in the center of a trampoline, you decelerate over a distance of a few feet. A deceleration from 17 miles per hour to zero in three feet is a little over three Gs of force. No big deal for a normal person. ASTM standards require trampoline frame pads to be two inches thick. When a person loses control and lands on a padded frame, the body must decelerate within that two inches. In a 10-foot fall, this can easily put stresses on the body of more than 50 Gs at the point of impact. To put that in perspective, a trained military pilot will pass out at around 9 Gs. 50 Gs of stress is not something you should make a regular habit of doing to your body can easily result in serious injury. To make matters worse, it isn't as simple as just decelerating over a distance of two inches. The deceleration rate of foam pads changes relative to its compression. Uncompressed, it offers very little resistance. As it compresses, the resistance increases. Fully compressed, a pad still has a thickness of a quarter to a half an inch. Realistically, a foam pad is decelerating unevenly over a distance of more like one and a half inches. Depending on the quality of the pad, this can push the forces above 70 Gs at the point of impact in a 10-foot fall. ASTM standards only require trampoline pads to reduce shock to less than 100 Gs in a 40-inch fall. That's with materials tested in a lab under ideal conditions. The minimum standard goes up to 180 Gs once it's installed in an actual park. It seems a bit silly to have to mathematically prove that shock absorbers, well, absorb shock, but for the sake of being thorough, let's compare falling on just a frame pad to falling on a shock trampoline's patented shock absorbing frame. A shock trampoline frame offers an extra four inches of distance for decelerating a falling body. Shock trampoline shocks are also much smarter than the simple foam pad, taking advantage of modern shock absorber technology. This provides much smoother deceleration, taking much better advantage of its four inches of travel than the simple-minded, uneducated foam pad is able to achieve with its less than two inches. Now, let's do some math. We'll be generous to the foam pad and pretend that it's actually decelerating evenly. Let's also give it a full one and three quarter inches to decelerate. Let's stay with our 10 foot fall, accelerating the jumper to a speed of 17.29 miles per hour decelerating smoothly, as our pad actually doesn't, 
Our jumper experiences 9.8 meters per second is 32.15 feet per second. Falling 10 feet, you hit a speed of 7.73 meters per second. This is going to get complicated, so let's just write a program. So our 10 foot fall decelerating in one and three quarter inches gives us 68.57 blah 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 g's of force. Let's take a look at that same fall on the shock absorbing frame. The same math with the combination of the overestimated effectiveness of the padding and the shock absorbing frame gives us, wait for it, let's call that 20.87 g's of force. So about 68 g's with just the frame pad versus about 20 G's with the frame pad and the extra shock absorption of the shock trampoline frame. That means that the frame pad with the shock trampoline frame is more than three times as effective as the foam pad alone. Or you could say falling from 10 feet with the shock trampoline frame is about like falling from 30 feet without it. Even without the shock system, shock trampoline parks fully conform to ASTM safety standards. With the shock system, shock trampolines offer more than 25 times the minimum requirements. To be honest, there are more variables than we can cover in a single video. People come in all different shapes and sizes, and there are many ways a person might land on a frame. But when you boil it all down, I know which trampoline park I'd prefer to send my kids to.